In today's video, I wanna talk about video ad sequencing in Google Ads. Yes, video ads and YouTube campaigns are really good at building brand awareness and building brand affinity, but they can do much more with ad sequencing. Not only can we work on building our brand, but we can also reinforce messages, tell a complete story to a user, and guide them down a certain path depending on the video creative that we already have in place and linked in our YouTube channel. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the campaign options that you have to create ad sequencing, the video formats that you can use, the bid strategies that are available in these campaign objectives, and then some possible troubleshooting down the road. So let's begin. So the first step in setting up ad sequencing is creating your new campaign, right? No, not this time. What we need to do first is making sure that we're going into our tools and settings and then heading into your linked accounts. The reason we need to go to our linked accounts first is that you need to make sure that your YouTube channel is linked to your Google Ads account. If you want to use ad sequencing for your video campaigns, whichever videos you want to use, that channel has to be linked to your Google Ads account. Let's go back to the previous screen now. Okay, so now if you want to run ad sequencing, you have three campaign goals where ad sequencing is available. The first one is product and brand consideration, encouraging people to explore your products or services. The second option is going to be brand awareness and reach, trying to reach a broader audience to build that awareness. Again, another strong value for the video campaigns. Or if you want to customize a goal, you can create a campaign without a goals guidance. And just for the sake of this video, I'm going to create the campaign without any goals guidance. No matter which one you choose, the bid strategies and the targeting options are going to be the same. And of course, these are video campaigns. And then for a campaign subtype, again, no matter which of the three campaign goals you select, ad sequence is going to be our subtype. Then we click continue. Make sure you fill in your campaign name. And now we want to select our bid strategy. So here's a couple things to keep in mind. When you select the ad sequence subtype for your video campaigns, there are only two bid strategies that you can choose from. It's either maximum CPV or target CPM. And when we talk about in-stream advertising and the real value of using a CPV because you could save a lot of cost, you may want to reconsider that decision if you're doing any ad sequencing. And here's the reason why. If you choose maximum CPV as your bid option, skippable in-stream ads are the only type of ad formats that you could show in this type of campaign. If you choose target CPM, you can use skippable in-stream ads. You can also use the non-skippable in-stream ads. You can use bumper ads or a combination of the three. So it gives you more flexibility if you're using target CPMs. Look at your campaign goals, look at the video creative that you want to include inside an ad sequence, and that can help you determine which bid strategy you wanna choose. By default, your budget is going to be set at the campaign campaign total level. And if you use a campaign total budget, you are forced to choose an end date. But if you want to have an evergreen campaign, make it a daily budget. And this will allow your ad sequencing to continue, give you more time to look at the data and possibly edit it to have a better flow for your users. Also, just to confirm your networks for ad sequencing, of course, we can't use YouTube search results. Those are only available for discovery ads. So we're automatically defaulted to just YouTube videos. And even better, which can make your in-stream ads more specific, we cannot select adding the video partners on the display network. So we know we are sticking our video campaigns only on YouTube. To me, this is perfect. Next, you select your appropriate languages and your locations. Pretty straightforward there. And when we go down to ad targeting, here is where there's another really big difference between ad sequencing campaigns versus any other video campaigns that you could be running. With ad sequencing, you cannot target users with keywords, topics, or specific placements. However, you can use topics, placements, or keywords as exclusions within the campaigns. So of course, this means we can only target our ad sequence based on specific demographics or any audiences that we have created either within Google Analytics or Google Ads and fed back into the audience manager. Next, you can select whichever content exclusions are appropriate in addition to the other exclusions that you may have. And then let's talk about frequency capping. By default, frequency capping is set to show one entire sequence per user every 30 days. Frequency capping cannot be edited when you're running an ad sequencing campaign. Now at the very bottom, let's go and start creating our steps for the campaign. In this particular example, let's say I just wanted to promote the Quora videos that we have on the Paid Media Pros channel. If someone hasn't even started to run Quora ads yet, the first step they need to do is get the pixel on the site. So that's gonna be the first video I wanna show my target audience. I have my cheat sheet here just for the sake of this video. So the first ad group I'm gonna create will be the pixel video. And I purposely chose the target CPM bid strategy option just so you can see the different ad formats that are available. As you can see, the ad itself looks like any other in-stream ad that you can create within your campaign. We already have the video in place. Now I wanna make sure I have the final URL. Definitely recommended, especially if you're choosing the target CPM to try to get more users to go to your website or your landing pages, add the call to action extension. 
select which companion pattern you want, and then we can add it to the sequence. Now, let's assume the user has interacted with this first pixel setup instruction video. I'm thinking to myself, what video do I want that user to watch next? So if they've interacted with the core video, they see the value of adding the pixel to the website, I now wanna show them a video of all the different targeting options that Cora has. And we already have a video on that one. Add another step. And now I can set who is eligible to see this next video. Do I wanna show the video if there was an impression with the user? Do I wanna show the video if the user definitely viewed it? Or do I wanna show another video if a user skipped it? I'm gonna select view now. We're gonna talk about skip a little bit later, but then we can see the sequence I wanna show next. Typically as users get deeper into the funnel, I'm gonna set a higher bid, no matter if it's CPV or CPM. Add the next video option. We can see the final URL I used in the first step is still available, so I don't have to re-add that one. We do unfortunately have to add the call to action extension every single time because it is an optional element and keep the companion banners the same and I can add that one to the sequence. Let's just do one more to be safe. We've got the user to watch the first two videos. They see the value of a targeting option video in Quora. Now I wanna show them a deeper video of a specific ad type. And in this case, we're gonna talk about Quora promoted answers. So again, I'm just gonna select view for people who've watched step two. Again, I'm gonna set a higher CPM bid. Set my call to action extension and then add it to the sequence. Now let's say for whatever reason, the user was not interested in that first Quora video. They weren't engaging with it and they skipped it. I might have a different strategy in place saying, okay, if they weren't interested in Quora, but I know they're still interested in social media advertising at any point, Let's try out a different video to see if we can engage users in a different way. So if they skip my first Quora video, I can add a new step and it's already defaulted if they skip the first one. I'm gonna set a different bid. Again, you can choose whichever one you want. And then I'm gonna show them potentially a Facebook advertising video instead, just to see if it makes a difference. Add that one to the sequence and we can see that the tree can keep going. And pretty much I'm starting a second ad sequence if the user skipped the very first one. And the same element goes of if the user skipped video two, we can start a whole different sequence to keep guiding those users in different directions depending on how they're engaging. Now after you're running these campaigns for a while and you're seeing different data come through and you're looking at the interactions that users are having, the engagement that you're getting, for whatever reason, let's just say option number two isn't working well. We do have the ability to edit the step change whichever elements that we want to try to test out a different video in its place within step two. If for whatever reason you wanted to delete step two completely, you need to be very careful with this because if you delete a certain step, every other step or element after that will also be deleted. You can't just only delete this video and shift everything up. So look at editing your steps and also plan it out very carefully before you create any steps, especially if you have a very long ad sequence in mind. And just for the sake of this video, I'm gonna keep this ad sequence pretty short, so I'm gonna save and continue. And your campaign is ready. It'll take a little bit for your ads to get approved, but you have a chance to kind of review it one more time if you wanna make any step changes, but then we can continue to the campaign. Now, of course, this is a brand new campaign, so I have no stats to look at, but we can see different reporting columns within the Google Ads interface when you're running a video sequence campaign. Yes, I realized I forgot to name the other video campaigns. This one right here is the Facebook campaign, but this is step two and step three of the Quora campaigns. So because of that, we see the sequence step. We can also use the sequence path column to locate where the step is within the sequence. And then you can add your other video columns that you typically use to re review your video campaigns. And then they'll give you the information you need to possibly go back within the ad sequence, make any edits, remove any steps, and any skippable layers to it. Again, it's gonna be all based on the data or which creative you have that could come into the mix depending on the goals of your campaign. Now, when it comes to troubleshooting, I don't wanna run through specific examples. I would rather just show you exactly what Google tells you to do on their ad support page, specifically for these ad sequences. If you change a video within an ad sequence, possible errors or issues could come up. Some users will become ineligible to see your sequence and others may actually repeat previous sequences. So for going back to what I mentioned before about possibly deleting certain steps or editing those videos, you could mess up with the flow of those users depending on what audience they are in. And then if those users are seeing videos again or if they're missing steps, the reporting could be impacted and also an inaccurate if those users are kind of crossing steps and we're losing the actual place of where some of these users are. Another point that they mentioned in the troubleshooting, which is what we mentioned very early in the beginning, is that you can't create a sequence step until you've linked your YouTube channel. So hopefully that was the first step you've done. You listened to this video, congratulations. We don't have to ever worry about that one. And then last, bulk editing is not available in both the channel and even in ads editor. 
It may or may not be an issue, but something you definitely want to keep in mind if you're used to doing everything in editor. And those are the main features for video ad sequencing within Google Ads. Since this subtype was announced, there's already been a few tweaks to the features for ad sequencing, and we can probably expect a few more down the road. But if you have a constant video creative and you believe in video marketing, you believe in telling a brand and story and guiding users down the funnel, video ad sequencing is a great feature to test in your video campaign, so give it a shot. Thanks for watching our video. Make sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel to see more videos.